Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. So I want to come on here and talk about something. Um, I don't want this to turn into the conspiracy, you know, channel, okay? I'm just here to, you know, spill tea and spill a little celebrity gossip and news, right? But every now and then I like to talk about more serious topics. So earlier today I had posted on Instagram about how the locusts are taking over in East Africa. So they are ravishing Kenya right now. They're also ravishing, I believe, Ethiopia, Somalia, and some of Uganda. So it's getting really, really bad. And, you know, with the way that they're eating and swarming around, it's affecting the people's food supply. Where people will end up starving if this continues, and I don't see anybody talking about it really on social media. I see some news outlets covering it, but most people are not talking about this. They're unaware of what's going on um, over there in Kenya. And to the people who are saying, oh, well, this happens every year. This is normal. This is a biblical proportion, okay? So stop leaving silly comments on my Instagram page saying that they always get locusts. Yes, they do get locusts, but not this many. Literally, I have seen videos coming from Kenya where the sky is black and it's filled with nothing but locusts. I mean, like, ugh, I hate bugs, you guys. So just watching some of these videos that you guys send me just... Like, it gives me chills, okay? So, no, this is not normal. This is crazy. This is something biblical. I don't know what's going on in 2020, but this is just really sad. I want you guys to go ahead and watch these news clips. Check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. The worst locust crisis in decades is ravaging East Africa, threatening the food supply for millions of people. Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia are at the center of this latest outbreak. You can see in this video just how massive the locust swarms have been across the region. These bugs have infested farmland and destroyed crops. Farmers are calling on the international community to help prevent a food crisis. The United Nations says the region needs around $76 million to combat the crisis. Officials warn the locust outbreak will spread across the entire continent of Africa and into other parts of the world if action isn't taken. This is a very rare phenomena, but once it does occur, it, it becomes extremely threatening um, to food securities, livelihoods, pastures, and of course, with pastures, if, if herders have to move animals into new areas, that this can be sources of conflict. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata is following the latest in Johannesburg. So, Deborah, even before this crisis, millions of people in the region faced high levels of food insecurity. And we know this area has typically faced harsh climate conditions like drought and flooding. So what's the latest on this crisis and how bad is it? Well, as you just mentioned, $76 million bad. That's how much um, the United Nations says it needs to combat this outbreak. And they're making no bones about it. They need that money now. It's the worst in 70 years for Kenya and in quarter of a century for Somalia and Ethiopia. And just to give you a sense of how big these swarms are, one was spotted in a part of Kenya that contained about 200 billion of these creatures and in the sky it occupied a space three times the size of New York City. And as the um, Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN has warned, they could increase 500-fold by June if not contained and checked immediately and spread elsewhere. Now, part of the problem is that these locusts are very difficult to track. They move very quickly, but they're not just a scary invasion. They also eat food. Even a small swarm of locusts can consume enough food for 35,000 people and farmers are complaining that about 90% of their crops have already been destroyed. The locusts are now moving towards Uganda and towards South Sudan. South Sudan already under terrible, terrible strain um, from food insecurity. And if you consider that over 20 million people in East Africa are already facing food shortages due to periodic drought and flooding, you have a very serious problem when locusts start eating their only source of food. Vlad? Deborah, we're watching like this video where people are trying to swat at this swarm with their jackets, and so it looks absolutely futile. What exactly is causing the outbreak to escalate the way it has? Well, you know, as many people have mentioned, these swarms look almost biblical, and while it 
may be very tempting to blame some kind of higher power here, there are some very obvious suspects and one of those is a changing climate. These locusts were actually spotted 18 months ago in the Arabian Peninsula. They then moved to Yemen by July last year and already the FAO was warning that if left unchecked, if preventative measures were not put in place, they would then move to Kenya. Well, they weren't and now they're in Kenya. And what contributed to this was unusually wet rainy seasons which created this exceptional breeding ground for locusts. They thrive after rainy weather because there's so much food to eat and they grow very very quickly. They only live three to five months but in that time a population can absolutely explode if left unchecked and that is what actually happened in this particular instance. Okay, so you guys just saw those videos and it's sad because again, you know, the food supply is going to be affected. People are going to starve. Children, you know, men, women. And so the international community definitely needs to get behind what's going on. Because, again, like I always tell you guys, it's so easy to sit in the comfort of our home or in a whole other part of the world and think, well, that's affecting those people. That's not going to affect me. But it really can. You know, everything in this world has a trickle-down effect. And, you know, I hate to be cliche, but this is one big circle of life. <laughs> I wish I could sing, but y'all get what I damn mean, okay? This is one big circle of life, so, you know, anything that happens in some small part of the world can really affect us here, okay? Think about everything that's going on with the coronavirus. Before this, I didn't know where Wuhan was, okay? I didn't know nothing about Wuhan, um, never heard of it before, but look how something happened in a small section in China, and it's now become literally a global pandemic, okay? This is scaring the international community. Literally, Asia has come to like a standstill, particularly China, but a lot of Asian countries are also affected now because of the coronavirus. So now, if that's not crazy enough, I want to show you guys something else that I have been sent that's just really sent chills down my spine. There's a, and I talked about it earlier uh, when I talked about the locusts on Instagram. There is a community in Australia. Remember in late 2019, Australia was dealing with forest fires. There were forest fires all over the continent. You know, koala bears were dying. Kangaroos were dying. It was really sad, right? There's a small town called Ingham, Kingsland, Australia. And they are dealing with the bat infestation of once again, biblical proportions. They've never seen this. These bats swarm into this town. They're like, oh my God, it's like a million bats. They're so heavy, the trees are falling, they're shitting everywhere, the town stinks. I just, oh my God, I was just so creeped out watching this story. <laughs> I hate bats and I hate bugs. This is like the hardest YouTube video I've ever had to shoot because I know I'm gonna have to edit this shit. Oh, <sighs> let me breathe. Oh. Y'all go ahead and check out this damn video and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Ugh. The noise. <sighs> okay, I breathe. Forgive me for freaking out, but I just, I don't like bats. I don't like bugs. I just don't like creepy crawly things. I understand they need to be here because you know, they're, they're, they're you know, part of the circle of life. But I don't want them swarming around my damn town, okay? I don't want to look outside and the sky's black. Little locusts and bats. Like, I feel so bad for the people who live in this town. Like, I couldn't even imagine then just the sound of them. Ah! Oh, the way they're just screeching and flapping their wings. Ugh, oh, I don't care if they were damn cute little sparrows. I don't want to see a whole bunch of animals, you know what I'm saying, chilling any damn way that they shouldn't be. Where do these bats come from? Like, this is really scary. This has never happened before in this town. And isn't it interesting that as the coronavirus is spreading, 
all of a sudden you have a town dealing with this infestation of bats. Then you have over there in East Africa, they're dealing with infestations of locusts. I mean, this is just really, really scary stuff. Again, this is not the conspiracy channel, nor is this the coronavirus channel. But I didn't see anybody else talking about this, especially, you know, in the black sector of YouTube. And, you know, when I get certain information, I do want to share that out because I do have a platform. But something is going on here. And we need to be aware that things, once again, that happen in different parts of the world can and will eventually affect us. Like right now, you know, I'm in the Twin Cities and like the temperature is like negative 10. It's like freezing outside. And last week it was like in the, I think like 30s. So I'm like, damn, you know, the temperature like dropped really crazy in these past, you know, 48 hours. It's been like been really, really cold. So I, I just don't know what's going on with the world anymore, you know, I believe some of this is climate change, some of this is global warming, but that's a whole nother video. We've talked about that in the past. You know, again, global warming is not a conspiracy to y'all who are like, oh, it's just made up, whatever. No, global warming is definitely serious. And, oh, another thing I ran across, um, there's parts of Antarctica where the polar ice caps are melting, and this was the warmest season ever in Antarctica. I think they were like, they had hit like 60 degrees or something like that. It was something crazy. If I can find that news article or the video, I'll place it in here. Summer on the Antarctic Peninsula still means wearing winter jackets, hats, and gloves, as daily high temperatures there are typically just above freezing. On February 6th, though, it was t-shirt weather at Argentina's Esperanza base, as the temperature there reached a high of 18.3 degrees Celsius, roughly 15 degrees higher than normal. This is now the highest temperature ever recorded at the base, beating out the previous record of 17.5 degrees back in March of 2015. According to the World Meteorological Organization, this new record high is likely due to a weather condition known as a phone, which is similar to the Chinook winds experienced in southern Alberta. If confirmed, the WMO says that it will likely become the highest temperature ever recorded for the entire Antarctic continent. The Antarctic Peninsula is one of the fastest warming regions of the world, with temperatures there rising at roughly three times faster than the global average temperature. But yeah, even in Antarctica, you have like um, icebergs just falling off into the sea, like, and then it's causing the sea levels to rise. And for y'all who don't know, I did a video about this years ago, and I can't find it to do a flashback. But what happens is that when the sea level rises in Antarctica, and those icebergs start to melt, it affects the entire world because the sea levels then start to rise all over the world. And if you guys remember, I always go to the Everglades. That's like my spot whenever I'm down in Florida on vacation. And people are like, why do you always hang out in the Everglades? You're always holding alligators and, you know, weirdo shit. But I like baby alligators for one. And for two, the reason why I like to go to the Everglades is because, like I told you guys in that video like three years ago, the Everglades will not be here much longer. Um, the whole southern Florida, damn near the whole southern part of the United States is slowly sinking. And I noticed that when I was down there in Miami for my birthday, how when it would rain, the streets would flood. And anybody who lives down in Florida, especially in southern Florida, can attest to this. The streets flood. You're literally wading through water on just a normal rainfall day. And so... That made me start researching stuff about climate change and how it's affecting cities like Florida, New Orleans, places, um, you know, in Texas. So the problem is the Everglades and, you know, the wetlands in different cities, they're supposed to be a natural barrier for, you know, hurricanes and storms. But because, again, human beings like to fuck shit up, we are moving closer and closer to the coastlands and they're destroying those natural barriers. They're destroying the Everglades and the wetlands. And so that's why we're getting more and more damage. We're getting more and more severe storms. And now with the um, Antarctica becoming warmer and warmer every year, and this was the highest on record in years with the warmth, um, it's going to cause the sea level to rise. And you're going to see more cities sinking. And this isn't just for America because, like I told you guys, we are all one big circle, right? So this is going to affect a lot of countries that are on the coastal plains of their country. So places in Japan, you know, places in Africa, places in um, uh, the Netherlands so this is a really serious thing and I don't know if I'm explaining this right but I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say
So this is really serious. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I just want to get the information out there. And I'm hoping that I'm explaining this right. I don't know because sometimes the way things are in my mind and how they come out my mouth can <laughs> y'all not be mixing up words. So I hope I have that explained right. And I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from when I talk about the Everglades and the natural barriers that were protecting us now being removed and destroyed and the rising of the sea level in Antarctica affecting not only us here in the United States, but anybody in a coastal city. Stay woke. I don't even know if y'all are into any of this shit, but I just decided to, like, talk about it. Y'all probably like, T, shut up and, like, tell me what the hell is trending. But I don't know. This is on my mind. This is on my spirit. So I just feel like I need to make a video to let you guys know about this. But, um, you know, hopefully it doesn't ruin your Valentine's Day. But, you know, I just, you know, I had to put the information out there. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this. This is like some really scary stuff. You know, the people in East Africa, you guys are in my prayers. I hope that the international community, the World Food Bank, you know what I'm saying, and everybody comes together to do something about this, you know, to, to get rid of these locusts. Because, again, it's right now it's in that small pocket of East Africa, but these locusts, they, they're eating machines, okay? Remember back in the, in the Bible days um, during Moses' time, they cause famine across the land. So if this spreads, it can spread from East Africa to all over the continent. So they need to nip this in the bud now before it gets worse. So I just wanted to make people aware of what's going on in the world. This is your world news brought to you by Lovely T. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe I should turn this into a segment, world news. I don't know. Anyways, y'all, make sure you subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Y'all like my shirt? It has a little holes for my thumbs. Hit the thumbs up. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that way you can be down with the notification squad. Thank you guys so much for just supporting everything I do. Um, thank you guys for supporting my podcast. I'm glad you guys are liking it. And, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, honey, I'm just giving 2020 the side eye, okay? I just, I really am. Uh, 2020 to just, I don't know. It's just me and 2020 are beefing right now. Just so much just craziness going on. Okay, I'm out, you guys. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. Enjoy your Galentine's Day. Or just enjoy, you know, being here with me. All right, deuces.